हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू अ न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ ऑल अबाउट ब्रिज इंजीनियरिंग एंड दिस एपिसोड इज ऑल्सो इन द प्ले लिस्ट जर्नी ऑफ अ ट्रस्ट एंड टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग दिस सपोर्ट कंडीशन ऑफ दिस ह्यूज ओपन वेब गर्डर ऑन विच द डेक्स लैब इज येट टू बी कास्टेड एंड रिन्फोर्समेंट इज स्टिल बींग प्लेस ऑन द टॉप सो टूडे वी विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन सपोर्ट कंडीशन एंड नाउ आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग यू अ टिपिकल टाइप ऑफ रोलर बेरिंग एंड वेन एस ए रोलर बेरिंग as you can also see there are two rollers so this is a multi roller bearing and today we will discuss its components the degrees of freedom that it has or the translations and rotations it can resist or it can permit so let's start with the components of this very bearing assembly so the most important components are these rollers which are cylindrical in shape and as you see there are two rollers so two rollers are generally provided because the span is large it is 52 meters of span the superstructure is in 52 meters of span and the span is large which means more vertical forces will come and a single roller may not be sufficient to take care of those vertical forces and this is one reason why we have gone to two rollers rather than just one roller so this is containing two main components two rollers instead of one roller please note it in mind and this component that you are seeing that is connecting these two rollers is known as the link plate or the link bar the main function of the link bar is to ensure that both these rollers undergo same deformation or sorry same translation whenever there are longitudinal forces encountered on the bridge so if this link bar is not present it may be the case that first roller may undergo some different movement some different movement and the second roller may undergo some different movement so to ensure that both these rollers move by a same distance this link bar is very important please note if this if the dia of the roller is high then the, then instead of single link bar we can have multiple link bars also i have attached one uh, one very good general basic bearing document in the descriptions you can have a look, uh, look at that at the end of the episode it contains the details of these very components in a very good manner so please have a look at that as well if you find time so yes this these were the two main components and now you can see this top plate of the bearing assembly is actually uh, attached with the bottom cord of the truss so this bottom cord is attached by additional one plate which is welded with this bottom cord this very plate and it is supported by the top plate of this bearing assembly so to ensure sufficient horizontal thrust is transferred between the top plate of the bearing and this plate which is connecting the bottom cord of the uh, truss this connection has to be made very rigid so which we can make which we can obtain through welding and uh, we have talked about the top plate now this is the base expansion plate over which these rollers will move please note that this entire circumference of roller does not take part in the translation only a little dimension or a little distance is available for translation and for that we have some uh, longitudinal guides after which the translation will be stopped and i will bring it by another view so you may be able to see these Uh, two blue shaped uh, horizontal members what horizontal uh, rectangular members so these basically permit that what up to what extent these rollers can move once the rollers strike these very plates which i'll bring by another view so you can see this there is a gap between the roller and these plates so once the rollers strike these very plates then there will be no further a longitudinal movement so this was a brief discussion about the components of a bearing and also not i have placed a ruler on that so let's see what is the reading uh, these are roughly 10 inches which means that from the top of base plate to the top of top plate the height of the bearing is around 25 cm or roughly 250 mm and uh, yes now let's discuss about the main role of the bearing so if we have a multi roller bearing then it is allowed to move in longitudinal direction but it is restrained in the transverse direction and how this is accomplished i will bring it by another view so you can see this groove so there is a groove between bearings uh, between on the cylindrical part of the bearing and also these vertical 
tiny projections on the base plate so this is actually it is ensured that the bearing rests directly over them and uh, to resist the to restrict the transverse movement of the bearing these uh, vertical projections actually fit into the grooves of the bearing and then resistance is obtained so this was another component of the bearing and now as i discussed that if it is a multi roller bearing longitudinal movement is permitted transverse movement is restricted but what about the rotation so there comes a very important fact which many engineers don't know if it is a multi roller bearing then trans then rotation is not permitted you may be surprised to know this but yes this is true but if it is a single roller bearing then rotations are also permitted so for a single roller bearing longitudinal movement and longitudinal rotation both are permitted but if it is a multi roller bearing only longitudinal movement is permitted and longitudinal rotation is not permitted so since it is a truss type structure it restrains forces mainly by axial actions so in this case bending will not be predominant but if it had been a plate girder then definitely we would have uh, obtained that rotation capacity through a pin arrangement at the top so for that you can again uh, visit that link in the description on which you will find a document how we can play with the bearings and why it is important to know about the bearings so yes that was the detail that i wanted to highlight but also note uh, i would like to end this episode by mentioning that bearings play a very important role and there is still a lack of knowledge for the bearings among the engineers and uh, i also feel that engineers should know much about bearings as much as they know about the superstructures and substructures because if you change the nature of bearing you can play with the forces that the abutment is about to take for example if you keep a bearing that will uh, have no longitudinal movement it means all the longitudinal forces are to be resisted by the abutment as well so that is the play that is the criteria when we decide how to provide bearings for example you must have come across fixed abutment free abutment so all these details i will bring in some another episode just to shorten this very episode which was focused just on the bearings so i hope you like the episode if you found it informative please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe this channel where i bring the stuff to bridge the gaps between books and reality to bridge the gaps between actual design in cubicles and actual things at site so yes that's it stay tuned for further episodes mm -hmm.